Hello, everyone. Welcome to Calculus for Management Science. Our topic for this session is about functions. In many practical situations, the value of one quantity may depend on the value of the second. For example, the customer demand for beef may depend on the current market price or the value of a rare coin may depend on its age. Such relationships can often be represented mathematically as functions. And now we define functions. So a function is a rule that assigns to each object in a set A exactly one object in a set B. The set A is called the domain of the function and the set of assigned objects in B is called the range. So for most functions in our discussion, the domain and range in range will be collections of real numbers and the function itself will be denoted by a letter F. The value that the function F assigns to the number X in the domain is then denoted by this symbol, which read as F of X, which is often given by a formula such as f of x is equal to x squared plus 1. It may also help to think of such a function as a mapping. A mapping from numbers in A to numbers in B. Or a machine that takes a given number from A and converts it into a number in B through a process indicated by the functional rule. For instance, the function f of x the function f of x is equal to um, x squared plus four. So this function can be thought as an F function that accepts an input X. So we substitute any value in this variable X, then squares it and adds four to produce an output Y is equal to X squared plus four. So no matter how you choose to think of a functional relationship, it is important to remember that a function assigns one and only one number in the range to each number in the domain. For example, find f of 3 if f of x is equal to um, x squared plus 4. For our solution, our x here is equal to 3 and we will just substitute 3 here. So we got 3 squared plus 4. So 3 squared is 9 plus 4 is equal to 13. So you can indicate that uh, 13 is the number the function assigns to 3. And we can write it as f of 3 is equal to 13. It is often convenient to represent a functional relationship by an equation y is equal to f of x. And in this context, x and y are called variables. In particular, since the numerical value of y is determined by that uh, of x, we refer to y as the 
dependent variable and to x as the independent variable. So note that there is nothing sacred about the symbols x and y. So for example, the function y is equal to x squared plus 4 can just as easily be represented by s is equal to t squared plus 4 or by m is equal to n squared plus 4. And now we go to another example. So if uh, g of t is equal to the quantity of t, t minus 2 raised to 1 half, find these functions. Recall that um, x raised to um, a over b is equal to the um, b root of uh, ax raised to a, okay? Whenever this uh, constant here, a, b, these two are positive integers, okay? So now we go back to our example. So for our solution, we rewrite the function as g of t is equal to the square root of t minus 2. Then, given that our t is equal to 27, 5, 2, and 1, we just substitute this value in this variable. So for the g of 27, we have a uh, square root of 27 minus 2, which is equal to the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. And for g of 5, we have a uh, square root of 5 minus 2, which is equal to square root of 3, and the square root of 3 is 1.7321. And the g of 2 is equal to 0, okay? However, g of 1 is undefined since g of 1 is equal to the square root of negative 1. And negative numbers do not have real square roots. Functions are often defined using more than one formula, where each individual formula describes the function on a subset of a domain. A function defined in this way is sometimes called piecewise defined functions. So here is an example of such a function. Find f of uh, negative one half f of one and f of two if the function f of x is equal to one over x minus one if x is less than one or f of x is equal to three x squared plus one if x is uh, greater than or equal to one. Now for our solution, since x is equal to negative one half, it satisfies x less than one. So we use the top part of the formula, which is f of x is equal to one over x minus one, to find um, f of negative one half. So we substitute negative one half to the variable x. So we have this. So one over a negative one half minus one. And then we operate this negative one half 
minus 1 is equal to negative 3 halves. And the 1 uh, over uh, negative 3 halves is equal to negative 2 third. However, x is equal to 1 and 2 satisfy x is greater than or equal to 1. So um, f of 1 and f of 2 are both found by using the bottom part of the formula, which is the f of x is equal to 3x squared plus 1. Okay. And we substitute 1. So we got f of x is equal to 3 times the quantity of 1 squared plus 1, which is equal to 4. And for the um, f of 2, so f of 2 is equal to 3 times substitute 2 uh, into the variable x. So we got 2 squared plus 1. So 2 squared is 4. So 4 times 3 is 12 plus 1, 13. Okay, so we got 13 as our answer.